Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subs. Thank you for subscribing. Okay, we're back on the Enduro. Um, gonna have to shift gears a little bit because um, waiting on some parts and such, so we gotta do that. So, uh, but she's coming along. So what I'm gonna do here is go through the carburetor. I've run it through the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, get it mostly back together anyway. And then we're gonna look at this lower unit and I still gotta find me a bolt to put the tiller handle on. So that's what we're gonna do and then I'm gonna look for some transom clamps. So come along with me. That's the old ultrasonic cleaner going at it there. I'm going to let that run through there for about 10 minutes or so, and I'll be back. Alright, once I get my gaskets all cleaned up and everything, I like to take a little petroleumus, a little petroleumus, vaselinus, and rub on them gaskets. Get them all good. It up. Helps them stick when you go to line up your screws and stuff too. We'll just put some little Vaselinos. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little bit of Vaselinos. Petroleonus, Stilionus. That's on. Get them all plied up. Ain't no law saying I can't use no gasket over. I don't want to hear on all that. I don't want to hear on all that. Nothing wrong with them gasket. Nice rubber, nitrile, whatever they make them out of. You know, you know, good stuff. There's my gasket. I even rub a little on, on the float. So, now, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off for just a second so I can light off my air compressor so you don't have to listen to all that. I'll be back. Okay. Okay. Get some pieces, parts. Out of your ultrasonic cleaners. And we got to get all the little, little bits, little bits. Okay. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is get my air gun and blow out them pussing in the jets. If you look right in here, get me pick. Hopefully you're in there. Right in here, these two slots here on these Yamaha Enduro 40s, that's your transition holes in there. So I'll be running a wire right down through there. Then I see I forget another jet I need to get out of here. Right down here. So let me get my screw drop. Screw, screw, screw drop. I 
get that jet out of there too and give that a clean. If it come out. Okay, this one might be set, so I better count it. One and a half. One and a half. So go ahead and blow some air down in there and carb intake cleaners. You know, you know. Yep, that's what I figured. Just one on each side. I think I'm gonna clean them one at a time as to not get them mixed up. Not that it would probably matter. I hate the way they're set back in there like that. It makes it hard for me to. Can't get my big old fat fingers in there. You know, you know. There she be. Looks nice and clean, really. Okay, I tell you what, I'll put this one on the left. Okay, opposite of the linkage. Okay, let's take the other one out. And count this one too. Half, one, and this one was about one and a quarter. I'm gonna set them both back at one and a half. I think that's what they're supposed to be. I think that's what they pull to be. There's the other one. Looks pretty good too. Okay, now I'm gonna get me some old cobby cleaner, shoot in them holes. Yeah, you know that. Hey, put that in there. Hey, and them jets. And them jets. See? Okay, that about looks like all of them there. It's a little passage right there though. Yeah, I saw it come out the bottom. Not so much of that one. I hope I ain't getting that on my camera lens. Um, and then those transition holes. And like I said, I will run a wire through them. Okay. Right down in there, everywhere. And there, everywhere. There, everywhere. Okay. There we go. Now, rinse off my hand. Okay. Now I'm just going to shoot some air. I'm, I'm going to keep it away from the camera so I don't blow it all in the camera. Let me turn the compressor back on. I'll be right back. Needle and seat. Um. There's so much corrosion down in that seat that it's it's eating some of it away. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. But uh, let me back out on my zoom. Yeah. It's kind of waddled that out. I cleaned it with a wire brush in there and all. But first I had to take a punch and get what was left of the needle. That's what's left of the needle. So I'm going to have to get online and see if I can find me a a new needle and seat. I went out and looked through my stuff and I, I do have some Yamaha needles and stuff but they're different than this setup. Most of these needles, these uh, seat, brass seats that you can unscrew out of there are 10 millimeter and this one here is 8 millimeter and this in here is skinnier than most. So I gotta get online with the model numbers, serial numbers. We got the car good and cleaned up. I just need a needle and seat. You understand us. But we are for a show. Come along with her. Um, so she's looking good. I got my fuel pump and all back on. Um, I'll have to get some transom clamps in there and then I'll get my tiller arm bolted on. I got to get a new cover for the end of the tiller handle. But she's coming along. A lot of work on this one. This one was abused to the levels that... Mm, mm. Da -da. So I've got to cut down this bolt a little bit. It's just a little too long.
Hyppy. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Man. What we're going to do. Is we are going to. You notice, after I cut that bolt down and everything, my tiller arm is on there. And you can see I got it all. There's the big bolt I cut down, or nut, that goes on the back of the bolt. Now we're going to put a little duck butter all up under there and into there and even on there. Okay. You can see there's the nut and bolt where I came through. And there's that. And I want to put a little geese on these cables too. Yeah. Beautiful. Geese it up, geese it up. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let me show you over here. Show you how good this linkage works now. Yes, I will. Okay. You walked right in there. Whoops. There you go. Nice and free. So. That is a success. We have a nice tiller handle all bolted up to the new bracket and everything there works good. But we got to get a this rubber part on here. I went out and got a donor kendo date right here. This tiller handle is actually broke. But the rubber's still good, so I'm going to pry that rubber off there, cut it to the length I need for this one. So let me peel that off. I'll be right back. Okay. I pried this off of here. You can see there's where it was broke. Now I've got to punch the rest of it out. I'm using a socket. Stick in there. And I should be able to hammer that out. Goes. I'll pull out my socket. So now I've got a nice rubber thing that I'll trim. And uh, here's where this was broke. You can see that metal and that metal somehow went together right in. Where's that line? Right there. Like so. Snap. So, oh well. But all I need was this piece. And I can trim it. You see, it only needs to go because you got writing on here for your throttle. So it just needs to be that long, right there where this line is. So I'll cut it with a razor knife. Oh yeah, that's going to fit good. So I cut that line right at that line with my razor knife. It would be easier if I did it over on the bench. There we go. There we go. She's cutting. There's the piece I need. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Then, come back over here, and we're going to get some, some yuppie goop 
Well, not with that jar, we ain't. Let's get another. So, I get some new goop. My jar done dried up. Hopefully, this one ain't. There we go. This one looks good. I better stir it up though. So, this is your regular contact cements. And we're going to paint it on there good and nice. Goopy doop. Put on the goopy goop. Put on the goopy goops. All the way around. Then we'll put some in the actual rubber boots or grip. Put some up in there. Put some up in there. I'm just putting it all up in there. Then I like to let this stuff sit for, you know, three, four minutes, five minutes, something like that. Get all tacky and yummy. And then I'll stick it on there. It's been about five minutes or so. So, there is a line. Now, where's that thing at? That's looking good. That's looking good. Okay. So we've got it on there. Uh, right where I want it. So now. We've got a nice, nice rubber grip. Clean that up. Feels good. Is good. There we go. So, yeah. So the tiller arm is complete. There we go, by Joe. It's name that tune. You know you can't hold me forever. I didn't sign up with you. 
You know you can't hold me forever. I didn't sign up with you. Name that too. Water pump housing off and look. Well, we're not going to take it off that. Um, make sure that impeller's good. Gee, many crickets. Man, them are tight. Don't want to bust them off. That one ain't bad. Oops, sorry about that. That one ain't too bad. Mm, that one's tight. Well, don't want to heat it. That'll just destroy it. I'm guessing. Ba -da -da -ba -ba. So I could squirt a little lube down in there. Let's do them all. Do a little work in it back and forth. And then put my impact on there. See if it'll drive it out of there. Boy, Joe, see all that white yuck. And so, what I do is run it down, back in and Tighten it, loosen it, tighten it, loosen it, and it'll generally come out of there. Generally! Not always. That one's still real tight. Full of little white powders. Well, that's a good place to grab this thing. Inside the cup, it looks really good. Pretty nice. But that impeller's pretty memory set. So we're going to have to order up one. Going to have to order up one. I don't have one. So if you see my dotted line here, I'm going to take Diablo 
Diablo! This Diablo tool! Take the old Diablo tool, cut it straight across there. Alright, you've seen this repair I do before. You can see a big chunk of the skeg's missing. Then I'll take one of these. It's a hydrofoil fin. I have a bunch of these come in on these old used motors. I'll take it then, bolt it into there, shape it the shape I want. Yodder, yodder, yodder. You'll see. Diablo. This one I better tap over just a I guess I should cut this one all the way off first, eh? Them screws gonna be long enough. Yeah, I think so, man. Get that washer, and that don't leave us a lot of thread left. You go, washer. That I'll see if I can make it work. So I pinch this one in, maybe I can. size already what size well that says it's the right size 
There we go. Now we're tightening it. This guy I'm not sure about. He seems a little short to me. Let me uh, do it without the washer and see if I can pull it out some and spin the washer back, the nut back off. Might be able to get it to pull through and seat a little bit. Do that and I'll spin it back off. Maybe I seated it on the other side a little better and get the washer on. Sometimes this works. I think it's gonna. I think we got enough maybe to grab there now. I think. Hope. I think I've caught it. <sighs> now, let me clean this mess up just a little and then we'll make some more mess as we as we smooth this thing out don't have to do a real good job here because I'm just going to make more mess with Mr. Diablo what they say tidiness is next to God leaning in this Somebody said that. Sure as heck wasn't always me. Everything a spot for every spot of thing. What I say. Okay, let me put my Diablo suit back on. And we'll get back to Diablo. All I'm gonna do is clean up these edges here. Taper them.
There's you a nice skate. It uh, is a quick, cheap, and easy method of repairing a broke off skate. So, that's how I'm going to done it. And uh, once I put a coat of paint all over the whole lower unit and get everything blended in one color, you won't even notice that hardly and that stuff that they make those out of I don't know what it is some kind of duralin nylon but it's tough as nails I mean it'll, it'll take a lick so uh, it's functional it'll look okay once I paint everything up so now I'm waiting on a water pump and I'm waiting on a carburetor needle and seat But, all in all, all in all, the old Enduro's coming along. Now, if anybody's thinking about running out, you know, and picking up one of these Enduro's, um, they're well worth it. Um, they're good motors. In fact, if you go to a Google and type in Yamaha Enduro Outboards, within the one or two top uh, sites there, they'll tell you. And it says right on there that the Enduro Series is an international series of engines produced by Yamaha Marine that are intended for heavy-duty commercial uses such as commercial fishing, hauling cargo, or anywhere an outboard that could be expected to do extended running and extended duty. That's what they're designed for. Now that being said, I will say this on these. Parts are harder to come by for them and getting harder every day. I went to Crowley Marine, I went to EngineMarines.com, I went to Boats.net, I went to iBoats. I could fi not find a needle in seat and everything. The parts numbers were listed there, but it said not available. 
not available, not available. So I ended up having to get a needle and seat out of China and uh, because it's the only place I could find one. Um, the impeller I found out of a local marine shop down in Washington. So hopefully that'll be here pretty quick. But they're harder to search for. If you go to one of those sites I just mentioned that you would normally go to to get your Evan Root Johnson parts and so forth, you will not find, like on boats.net, um, I challenge you to go on there and find an, an E-Series motor. Um, they're not there. Um, the the E-Series, it starts with the, the letter E. So this is an E-40 MLHI. That's what this is. From as close as I can date it using Yamaha's letter codes, it's a 1992. But I will say the parts are harder to come by, harder to find. But uh, they're good motors though. So that's all I got to say about that. So we got us a tiller. We got us a nice new rubber grip. Looks good. Um, got our cable throttle wires all hooked up correctly and right. Um, waiting on a needle and seat for the old Carba Denator. You understand us? And an impeller. But we're getting close. We got the skeg repair done. Um, I'm happy with that. The way it came out looks just fine. Once I get it all painted up, be pretty. It be pretty. It be pretty. So we get that, and uh, I'm gonna show you one more thing. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Now you saying, what is that? What is that thing? What is that thing? That thing you're looking at is my propeller anvil. I had a buddy years ago, years, years, years ago, make this for me. Um, and I don't know what he used to cut through that metal like that, give me that angle. But I told him the angle I want. And what this is for, you see this old ratty propeller here? You see that? How nasty that is, all the edges on it. I'll take a torch and I'll heat those. And I'll put them right there. And you look at this propeller and you go, that, 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 that propeller is shy. No, this propeller is going to be just fine. Once I flatten all this out, flatten all that out, then I'll take my grinder. Cause see, you couldn't you couldn't dress this thing properly right now. It's too warbly, too wavy. So I'll take my anvil here, my prop anvil. See that? Nice little little tack. And I find if I apply a little bit of heat to it, I can straighten them propellers right out. Then I'll take my grinder after I get all the warbly out of it. And I'll dress it up, and I'll dress it up, and it look good. Then I put some paint to it, it look good. That'd be how I do it. That'd be how I do it. You've got to do it. So, I just thought you'd might want to see my little propeller anvil. And, long way to go on the old, uh, in Dero. She was abused beyond belief. We'll get her. We're gonna get this old window. We got that tiller. Now keep in mind that's a big step getting that tiller on there. That's a big step because that was the issue. I can't even remember if I ever showed you guys this. You see this piece? All this here. That's why we had to do everything, take everything, I'll take everything apart, was to get the tiller arm somewhere to bolt to. 
and that was this piece here and when the engine came to me as soon as I figure out how to do this when the engine came to me this is what that piece looked like all broke it up and you can see there's some really unskilled efforts there with an aluminum welder of some kind but it was broke it all to pieces so but we are slowly getting it back together and it's getting late so that's going to be a wrap on this one that's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.